Hello, and welcome to Think About It. One of the great characteristics of a successful magician or illusionist is the ability to attract the audience's attention to something glaring and obvious, while off to the side under the table the other hand is pulling off the actual trick. I thought about that when I heard of President Obama's announcement that he has evolved into this position of being in favor of gay marriage. He's actually at various times in his life evolved to the other side of the issue and back over and back over and now, like a tennis match, back over to this side. And then I thought, you know, I really can't blame the guy. N not because of the policy itself, but because of his desperate desire to distract the audience from a failing economy, an administration rife with corruption, polling numbers that are taking a daily beating, and the loss of support from some of his core constituency who realizes the man really hasn't done anything in three and a half plus years. You do realize, of course, that with his announcement, nothing has changed. There's been no legislation proposed, no executive orders given. He's done absolutely nothing except try to distract the audience. It's a, it's a fairly pathetic political ploy, one not to be unexpected. In fact, I was mostly surprised at the level of surprise from fellow conservatives as they were aghast and the jaws were open and the eyes were wide because how could he ever do this? So, I mean, let's think about this. Are you really stunned that the most liberal leftist socialist president in the history of our nation has taken this position? I personally think he's held this position all along and has just now decided that if he can any way leverage some political gain out of it, he'll go ahead and share it publicly. I mean, you can't really be stunned by this, really. If so, were you also surprised to learn that when Joe Biden talked about how often he ate at Katie's Diner, you later found out that it had been closed for two years? I suppose you actually think that smile on Nancy Pelosi's face is real? Here's a little newsflash. She's had some work done. I think probably the only surprising aspect of the announcement for me comes from the knowledge that for 20 years Barack Hussein Obama purportedly sat in the church of Reverend Jeremiah Wright. I understand he claims to have never heard anything, but if he did, he heard that the Bible clearly condemns homosexuality. It's not a gray area. It's fairly well spelled out. And yet here is a man in such a desperate position to win some form of votes that he will publicly, arrogantly, proudly proclaim his opposition to something that is spelled out as clearly as can be in Scripture. I find that to be a very difficult position for a Christian to make. We're all imperfect, that's for sure, but I have to think there's a little extra measure of danger when you intentionally and publicly flout what the Bible teaches. I didn't write it. I'd be happy to read it to you, or you can take a moment to just thumb through Romans chapter 1 and see how accepting it is. My friends, these are troubled times here in our nation, not being made any easier by a desperate grab for power, by a president who wants to distract you from what he's done, and pretend that any stance he takes must indeed be the way our nation should head. I pray that's not the case. Because if so, the Bible also clearly spells out what the fate of Sodom and Gomorrah was. And it wasn't pretty. So don't buy it. Don't be shocked by it. Darkness produces darkness. That's how it works. But at the same time, if ever there's been a call to action for you to get ready to vote in November, this is it. Think about it.